All right, so yesterday you guys read this, and most of you guys have finished it and got it all done, which is awesome. Uh, you read about uh, Crystaller Central Place Theory um, answered in some of these questions. So this uh, really is a, about explaining uh, spatial arrangement size and number of settlements um, and what these settlements are kind of like. So there is an urban hierarchy, right? So there's a hierarchy of urban settlements within a place, right? Within a country, uh, within a state, you know, like the U.S. We'll look at Iowa tomorrow. Um, but there's some very um, kind of unique characteristics that um, central place theory kind of helps to explain about um, uh, kind of urban settlements, right? Um, I'll give you guys some feedback on this. But the two things we're going to kind of focus on, details of this theory, this theory consists of two basic concepts, threshold and range. Um, and understanding threshold and range within an urban settlement can also help us to understand the arrangement of central places or settlements in comparison to one another. Okay, so um, this arrangement of the central place uh, set and settlements um, is going to be uh, more relevant to our activity tomorrow. Okay, um, but a couple things when you talk about uh, urban, the hierarchy of urban settlements in comparison or spatially. Uh, comparison with one another, like the cities, towns, markets, uh, general rules, right? The larger the settlements, uh, the less there are of them and further apart they are. So city of Chicago is a very large city. Um, you don't see another large city that size for quite a while, right? The less there are of a settlement, the larger the hinterland or sphere of influence is of gets goods and services. A think of distance decay. The larger the size of the city, uh, the less there are of a settlement uh, in the maybe rural areas, the larger influence that urban hierarchy has, that urban settlement has. Um, and so then finally, the places of the same size will be sp spaced the same distance apart. So you can see this in this above. Um, villages are the same size, right? They're the same size, so they're the same distance apart. Cities? right? One large city, this follows that larger settlement, the urban hierarchy, right? There's one city, so it's going to be further apart, okay? Um, so just a couple of things before I get into this, all right? So two main theories, we're going to talk about range and threshold, and we're going to kind of apply it to the here, right? The local, and then we'll go out and compare it tomorrow in a broader sense, okay? All right, range and threshold. Um, today, April 1st, um, April Fool's Day, but nobody to prank. Um, but um, yeah, here we go. All right, so range, what is range and threshold? Uh, range and threshold um, is a couple different, um, two different things, right? They kind of go in together because we asked this question of how do services decide where to locate? One example I always like to use is, uh, you know, if you've ever taken a road trip or you've driven on the highway somewhere, um, magically, uh, you know, gas stations, McDonald's, you know, fast food places are always at the same exits. And I always ask myself, why? Well, we can explain why they are there because of the range and threshold. So for example, you know, a convenience store or fast food, they have the same range, as th range and threshold as each other. So McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell all have the same range and threshold. Therefore, it makes sense that you're going to see them in the same places because what they share in characteristics of range and threshold means it's going to influence where they're located. Uh, same with you know sporting teams. You know you don't see major sporting teams, you know in I don't know you know Huntley, Illinois, right? You see them in large cities. You know you see them in Chicago, New York, right? Well, in very few cities can support multiple teams, right? So it has to do with range and threshold. Okay. So what is the range? One range is the maximum distance people are willing to travel to use a service. So if you have a small range, people are, are, are only going to be willing to travel at small distances to get there. Uh, one example I always like to use is food, right? If I'm deciding between, you know, Domino's, Pizza Hut, uh, Papa John's, those are all very similar services in terms of quality and style of pizza. Generally speaking, and I know people have their preferences, but generally speaking, people aren't willing to travel 45 minutes to go get Domino's. They're going to go to the Pizza Hut that's five minutes down the road or 10 minutes down the road. They have a small range, just like a convenience store. 
you're probably not going to go out of your way to drive 30 minutes to go to a 7-Eleven because you like 7-Eleven. You're probably just going to go to the nearest convenience store, right? So range for a service uh, is often determined by the type of service that it is, okay? So like convenience stores, fast food, you're not going to drive very far, right? In a large urban settlement, a large urban area, fast food range is three miles. You're probably not going to leave more than three miles to get your fast food, if that, okay? Um, versus casual dining, which is five, and stadiums, which is 60. So stadiums takes us to a different example. Large range uh, services, things like concerts or sporting events, you're willing to travel long distances, right, uh, to, to get to those things, right? Um, I love concerts. I, I go to a lot of concerts, uh, not as much anymore. We're stuck at home, uh, but I'm willing to drive hours, you know, two hours to go to a concert for a band that I would like to see. Drive into the city from where we are is an hour plus, right? Is over, you know, 40, 50 miles, right? So I'm willing to drive that far uh, because it's a large, a large range. These big concerts, these big sporting events that usually are only in uh, large urban areas or large urban settlements, right? So small range, you're not willing to go very far to get those services. Large range, you're really, you're really, you're willing to travel distance to get there. That leads us into threshold, though. While we have a range, what is the threshold? There's a threshold, basically, and this gets down to the the business side of it you need a certain number of people to support a service, right? You can't have, um, you know, here's an example. You're not going to have a nightclub next to Talamore, right? There's not enough people to support that, that are willing to go there. It's families. You're not going to have families going to a nightclub and it's a lot of younger adults, uh, or sorry, maybe young families, young kids like that. You can't have that. That's not going to be supported, right? You see a nightclub in city of Chicago, right? Or amusement parks, um, uh, amusement parks are good. You know, you see one, but there's a reason why, uh, amusement park, it would be a large range because you need a lot of people, right? So it's a large range. It's pulling from very, uh, a larger amount of people, right? With a larger range, because people are willing to travel to go to something like an amusement park. So there's a higher minimum of number of people to support the service, but it's got to be located well. Okay. So there's another, uh, kind of, piece to this, right? So convenience stores and fast food appeal to everyone, right? But other goods and services appeal primarily to certain consumer groups, right? Fast food, uh, convenience stores, grocery stores, they appeal to everybody. Everybody wants those things. Everybody needs those things. But certain goods and services are, are, are primarily to certain consumer groups, right? Uh, movie theaters attract younger people, right? Poor people are drawn to thrift stores, while the other ones might frequent upscale department stores, right? Um, one example uh, that I like to use, too, is um, uh, what the heck that I always use with range. Oh, when we think about coffee and we think about Starbucks, right? If you've ever been down, you've taken the train down into the city and you're walking through the city and you see one Starbucks on this corner and one Starbucks on this corner. You might think, well, why are they right next to each other? What is that? This doesn't even make any sense. Well, a coffee shop would be a small range um, service, right? So people aren't going to be willing to travel 50 minutes to get, you know, their black coffee from Starbucks. They're generally going to be, you know, wanting to go a couple, three, three miles at most, right? They want to have that, right? But the threshold, there's a minimum number of people to support the service. So you need more people walking through the doors of a coffee shop, Starbucks, right? Spending kind of smaller amounts of money, right? Than say like 50,000 people at one sporting event, right? So you need that kind of flow of people because they're only spending, you know, a couple bucks at a time. Now I know Starbucks can get um, expensive, but if you think about like in an urban area, like the city of Chicago, Imagine this is one, um, you know, business skyscraper. This is another skyscraper. While they may be facing across the street on one corner versus another, it's a small range. So people working in the skyscraper, it's a small range. Are they? Do they really want to have to walk out of their building across the street, down three blocks to go get that coffee? No, right? You can just put one at the bottom of this place, right? The bottom of this uh, skyscraper, because think about all of the people that are working right? That fits the minimum number of people needed to support the service, right? You have, you know, 
hundreds or thousands of people working in a skyscraper every day walking past that. You can afford to put it because it meets the range and the threshold, right? By putting one here at the bottom of a skyscraper and one here at the bottom of a skyscraper. You're going to have enough people walking through the door that fits that range of what they're going to do, right? So that's kind of an example too. But that also can kind of explain why services decide to locate where they do because all services of the same kind of type share the same range and threshold. All right, so um, I have you guys list this. I'm just curious what you're gonna see. If you don't, that's fine, not a big deal, right? But make sure you go through this, right? So if you look at this map, what are some services that you might use? So Mrs. Wheeler uses this uh, map and this kind of, we have shared this PowerPoint, so she kind of put her stuff on here. But if you're thinking about the services that you use, right? <laughs> Service number one, Huntley High School, right? Uh, some of you might then, this is uh, Main Street, might be right here, the McDonald's, right? Or down here, the grocery store, Jewel, right? Or right here, anybody goes golfing, right? Here's a, a uh, well, this is probably better because this is for people in Del Webb, right? But here's a country club, right? Okay, so uh, here's Randall, right? I go to the gym right over here, right? So these kind of services um, are in the local, right? So this is what makes uh, Mrs. Wheeler did McDonald's, Nails, Walmart, Starbucks, Aldi, Chiropractor, Target, Trader Joe's, Panera, Costco, right? So those are all um, different services that are available to you. If you notice, though, in the suburbs, and we've talked about this, most of these services are along major roads, right? Randall and 47, right? So you'll see that where they're located also, too, depends on the type of settlement you're living in. In an urban area, you know, uh, in an urban area, it's not going to be always along main roads because you have a higher population density. All right. So how do you know if a location is profitable, right? So if a business would go into this to try and figure out uh, if a location is profitable, they first compute the range, right? So you literally take a map for convenience stores, right? We said it's 15 minutes out in the suburbs, probably, right? Compute the range for convenience store, maybe about 15 minutes, right? People are willing to travel that far to get there. Compute the threshold. If this, for example, if the store must sell $10,000 per week to make a profit and the average customer spends $2, say that's your coffee shop, right? So on average, it's your 2000, um, or sorry, your $10,000 per week, but on average, your coffee, you know, you make two bucks off of each coffee. That means you have to find a place where the range people are willing to travel within 15 minutes. And if they're asking to make two minute, $2 per customer, then the threshold has to be within 5,000 customers per week. You can compute that kind of in a 15 minute radius. Do you have enough customers in that area? Which is why you see probably, you know, places like a Portillo's hasn't opened up on 47, despite people wanting it. There's not enough. The range and threshold does not fulfill that market area yet for a place like Portillo's, right? Um, all right. So daily urban system. So then this is what we talk about these urban hierarchies, right? So if you look at it, these daily urban systems, right? They don't really follow state lines, right? They don't follow state lines. They fo follow urban areas, okay? So, you know, you look at Chicago right here. Milwaukee, but, you know, kind of like Rockford, Rockford area, kind of across the state lines, tri-state area, Dubuque, where I went to school, um, St. Louis, right? They don't really follow state lines. These are higher, uh, these are urban systems, right? So what are they? So they're divided up on U.S. Department of Congress, okay? And what are they based on? Functional ties focused on community to the nearest metropolitan area. So example, right? Let's say this, it's St. Louis, right? The nearest metropolitan area for people in Southern Illinois is not Chicago. It is St. Louis, right? So that would reflect this daily urban system. And what that means is these people in this area are going to be drawn towards, kind of pulled towards St. Louis for some of those, uh, you know, services, uh, large services that everyone has access to the services. And I'm talking about not just like one thing, we're talking about you know, every service that you might need, education, hospitals, you know, things like that, right? So in Southern Illinois, and you can see, and it makes sense a lot too, people in Southern Illinois, they don't, um, you know, a lot of them are Cubs, Cubs fans, right? They're St. Louis Cardinals fans, right? Even though they live in Illinois, okay? Um, 
Right. So there is an example, right? So even within, so these are connections spatially amongst cities, but even within an urban area, you see, you know, range and threshold of, of services, right? So Kroger, this is Dayton, Ohio. Kroger is a grocery store, right? So these are depending on range and threshold and, you know, population and income. And we'll look at an activity later. Um, this is where the market area for these particular Kroger's are. Right. So you see them all over the place, but they're kind of strategically placed in areas that fit the range and threshold of Kroger um, based on the number of people that live in these areas, the income and their willingness to kind of drive and get that far. So here's again Kroger. Here's an example of a Macy's. Right. So in some cases, this area is smaller. So Macy's is a department store. So you could probably guess that this is a higher income area if it's Macy's, right? If you have a Macy's um, kind of as a, you know, in there in the market area and these two small ones, you can understand that these probably are high income areas, right? Okay. Um, so anyways, so yeah, it says down here. Um, there we go. Oh, sorry. So it says household income. Um, right down here at the bottom. I can't get this. Household income is higher, right, in these areas, you know, that are uh, yellow or gold, I guess, fit over $50,000. So it's not a coincidence you don't see a Macy's in an area where household income is lower. Okay. All right. So want to review for Chapter 12 before Friday. Join uh, me for a Zoom review session. Like I said, Mrs. Wheeler and I share these PowerPoints. Um, check your email for the invite. I'll send that to you guys um, tonight, okay? So I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow.